Greetings, welcome, salutations. We're in Kane's Wrath, as you may be able to tell, but if you can't tell, there you go. It's Kane's Wrath, Command and Conquer 3 expansion, and we have Steve Nash on the right side of Tournament Rift playing as the orange. Zocom dropping down that power plant, dropping down that barracks, very standard there, getting that watchtower selling it off for that rifleman squad. Probably going to be getting out two engineers for those two Tiberium spikes that are in the bottom and also on the sides. Pretty standard there. I'm assuming with that that's what our purple GDI player, Gothic, is going to be doing as well. Yes, there's one engineer and a second engineer out of Gothic. Going to sell off that barracks. That's all very standard, especially on a map like this. And it looks like Steve Nash has already sold his barracks off where there's one engineer and not sure. Maybe he didn't get a second engineer. I'm not seeing it on the minimap, although I could be missing something. We do have a couple of... Really, Rifleman Squad's moving out. You can, of course, if you, you know, your Rifleman Squad takes out the other Rifleman Squad, you can then proceed to do a little bit of scouting. Not that you're going to be finding all that much that's interesting, because there's not a whole lot of uh, variations on among early game builds. A lot of times in Command & Conquer, well, at least in... Kane's Wrath, and normally what you see is this same opener, and then, let me guess, follow it up with two or three harvesters, yep, there's one harvester, going to be producing a second harvester, and then after that, it of course, you know, varies depending on the player, some players go for kind of a pit bull sp spam, if they're GDI, and some players go for, you know, heavier APC, or predators, and sometimes, you know, APCs. So this is pretty standard out of Steve Nash, and I'm assuming the timing for Gothic is right behind Steve Nash, matching up the three harvesters for each player. So nothing really to see here, although, hmm, I guess uh, Steve Nash had to cancel the production of that one harvester that he had building. And we do have a rifleman squad in each of their bases. So now... Uh, the timing was a little bit ahead for Steve Nash, but actually the timing is now kind of ahead for Gothic. Gothic 4, our other player, as he is, you know, a little bit ahead, and they're actually both deciding to pack up their expansions, uh, pack up their MCVs to expand down to the southern Tiberium field, which is, of course, very easy to secure, so you, you know, you got basically two bases given to you at the beginning of the game, and then, of course, there's a... Fifth Tiberium field in the middle, a little bit harder to secure, a little bit more advantageous as it is. I do believe it's a little bit bigger, and then you, of course, have that map control up to the center point of the map, which is pretty important. And then, of course, a seventh Tiberium field, and by seventh, I do mean sixth, because I'm just, you know, pretty good at counting. And, yeah, it looks like Steve Nash spotted that MCV. And killing the, uh killing the structure there to make sure that nobody captures that and is able to take down Steve Nash's forces. Steve Nash still has this Rifleman Squad uh, taking down that power plant, which Rifleman Squads, over time, they can be pretty effective against uh, buildings, as you may have seen in other games. We do have a pit bull. I don't know where this harvester is going. Yeah, that harvester is just kind of chilling out over there, taking a long way down here, I guess. And it looks like a couple of pit bulls out of Steve Nash, and he's got those four harvesters. Normally you see five before an expansion, but, you know, it's not set in stone. But he does have a total of seven, which I'm sure is not going to be matched by Gothic. We do have six harvesters out of Gothic, so lagging behind one, but he does have that force of predators. He's got five predators now, possibly six. Six predators now, which, you know, Steve Nash just can't match that. He's got the rocket harvesters, which actually, that'd be kind of interesting to find out uh, how many rocket harvesters it takes to, uh, it takes to, uh, take down a predator. So how many more rocket harvesters would you need than predators to win an engagement? We do have a pit bull going to be taken down, but he's also going to see that they're not going to be taken down, so he's going to see exactly what's going on. That predator, that pit bull will most likely be taken out, but we do have this force of Six, and I'm assuming seven, eight predators, nine predators. Yeah, this uh, pit bull is probably going to die right here. Just out of range of that predator goes down there. He was able to see, you know, he's got predator production. I don't think he does know about this base down here, and he does know about this war factory producing predators. So 
spam missile squads, I would guess, which he does have two right now. Calling in that uh, air transport, getting two rifleman squads, two missile squads, going to be loading them up into APCs, maybe? Pretty good choice, loading up uh, units in APCs. Can be pretty good choice. We're not seeing a command post so far out of Steve Nash, our Zocom player. We are seeing the armory, and it looks like he would be going for... I'm not sure which of those upgrades. I was going to try and see which one. He's going for the EMP... EMP grenades, which, you know, gives... Oh, um, shoot. Gives grenadiers EMP grenades. Which, you know, those lockdown vehicles in addition to doing the grenade damage. We do have Gothic, uh, just spam and shatterers, which shatterers, pretty good. Did deplete that Tiberium field, if you heard that. We do have uh, APCs out of one, War Factory, and shatterers out of the other, so... I mean, you know, if uh, Gothic mixes in some uh, infantry or some pit bulls, he'll have a fairly well-balanced strike force, as he'll have the... Uh, kind of the predator spam going on for the anti-tank, anti-building, and then also the shatterers as support to those tanks, and APCs as anti-infantry, mix in a couple of pit bulls, or put some rocket squads in those in, in those APCs as we do have potential for orcas or potential for hammerheads, as we saw in a similar game. Hammerheads can be quite effective when used properly. So, I would say, you know, Steve Nash... He's building up his strike force, he's mixing in infantry, which is good, as, you know, those infantry don't take very much damage from the tanks, do take lots of damage from the Predator, from the APCs, and also the Shatterers, which... Uh, three Shatterers, so not a whole lot of Shatterers. He does have that AP ammo upgrade. Has Steve Nash got his command center? Yes, he has, because he has the airfield, and he also has the tech lab, although no add-ons right now which means no railgun predators so here we have the uh, command post and he does if I could find uh, APC he does have that AP ammo upgrade pretty standard there it's a very very good upgrade to get makes uh, you know everything that has that fires bullets basically do more damage your uh, your hammerheads your riflemen APCs guardian turrets or watchtowers as they're called we do have a second MCV out of, yes, a second MCV out of Steve Nash, and we did see uh, our purple player Gothic load up his MCV and move out to try and expand here. That expansion did get locked down, but we do have a fairly large engagement out of here, dropping down the sonic emitter from Steve Nash, going to be helping out a huge amount, but it might get force fired down. No, it does get off two shots before getting taken out, and the Orcas do are able to take out a Predator tank and two sonic em Sonic Shatters, and it looks like Steve Nash just getting steamrolled by, uh, by Gothic, our, pur player, our purple GDI player, and dropping down another Sonic Emitter. He can build those two at a time because he does have those two MCVs, and it looks like he's building another base defense. Going to be a third Sonic Emitter as one did get taken out. Ooh, big hit there, very good hit, taking out two Predator tanks. And a third Predator tank does go down, as well as a Shatterer, so it looks like Steve Nash may be able to hold on here, although if, uh, well, he was able to hold on there, and I did miss this engagement down here, as there was two battles going on at once, but it looks like the Shatterers have been able to hold out, and all of the infantry did go down, as well as other units, and it does look like these Zone Shatterers are going to go down slowly, but surely. And uh, Pitbull over here taking down a power plant, I guess, and this base is, you know, half gone, but so is Steve Nash's base. I think he might be moving out with his MCV to this field, although he doesn't really have the army to secure it. Although Firehawks, we've seen them be used very effectively in the past. We'll have to see if they can take down the MCV. That would be a pretty big deal. Steve Nash, you're going to want to take down something important, possibly a tech center, if there is one, no there isn't, going to want to take out a war factory? Going for the uh, refinery, wasn't able to take that out, I would say that was a bit of a waste, although I'm not sure if they would have been able to take out a war factory, 
when it has that laser fencing, as the laser fencing does a little, give them a bit, of a, a bit of a defense boost. And we have Sonic Shatterer versus just the regular Shatterers. And it looks like the Shatterers are going to be pulling back and... Huh. Rocket, uh, Rocket Harvester is getting locked out, or getting pushed out kind of from their home Tiberium fields, getting sent out into the battlefield, going to be getting, getting taken out by Gothic. Steve Nash losing at least three Harvesters there. Possibly more. Looks like the Rocket Troops are all going to get run over. And yeah, Steve Nash expanding to the middle. Very good choice for him, but... Gothic is kind of already there. However, Steve Nash does have that second MCV, is able to throw down his shot. A Sonic emitter going to be able to take down that refinery unless uh, Gothic really does something to stop this, which his forces may just be too far away. Although that uh, Sonic emitter stopped firing at the refinery, so that's good on that. But he, did, he was able to drop down that barracks and that Sonic emitter immediately, and he does have these... Firehawks here, which will be able to take out a couple of different Predator tanks quite easily, or they can go for a structure. Might be able to take down the Juggernaut War Factory. Good choice. Was not able to take that down. So, I guess four Firehawks, at least when you don't have the uh, ammo upgrade, as I believe that is the original GDI, the vanilla GDI faction that has that upgrade. Yeah, ceramic armor is what Zone Zocom has, and it allows it gives them more HP. And then there's, I believe, the hard points upgrade is what it's called for just vanilla GDI. It gives them more ammo. We do have two juggernauts, no more so far, out of Gothic. He's completely halted production on his war factories. So usually means, not always, but usually means they're about out of money. As you know, if you've got some money, you want to be spending that, spending it on units, spending it on structures, spending it on something, preferably something that's going to help you win that game. We do have an Orca Strike moving out, possibly. A little bit on that army, going to miss it completely. So 500 credits down the drain there. We do have a sniper team, which... Uh, I talked about this in another game, but sniper teams and took down that war factory with those Firehawks. Sniper teams, they do have the, they can be paired with the Juggernauts to bombard from a great distance, or you can just use them to take down missile squads, which can also be very effective. We do have two Sonic Commanders going down right away, able to take out a Juggernaut and able to also take out a couple of Predator tanks and I think a Shatterer, but they both do go down. And we do have this Sonic Emitter back here, which isn't probably going to be doing a whole lot. Is able to take down one APC before it does get taken out, I'm assuming, by these Juggernauts. Because Juggernauts, you know, they outrange the Sonic Emitter. Pretty easy to take that down. And Steve Nash kind of up against the ropes, although so is our purple Gothic player dropping down the Reclamator Hub. And I can only hope that uh, Gothic Unit is going unleashed. to be getting out that Marv, yes, getting out that Marv, but he has no infantry, it's well, he has no barracks comes. as of right now to fill, you know, throw an engineer in there or zone troopers or something, because you can fit four infantry squads inside of the Marv, which, you know, I believe it's four, it better be four. Yes, four infantry squads inside of the Marv, looks like he's moving, or he's not moving his MCV, despite the fact that there was a couple of, uh, Huh, he's going to be uh, forced attacking on his own silo instead of selling it off, I guess. Not all that standard. We do have a... Oh, I thought that was a commando, but it's no. It's just an almost dead rifleman squad. Out of Steve Nash and this uh, harvester. Going to be able to not do anything. Except for, you know, kind of shoot them with their minigun. But the Marv is out. Sells off the Reclamator Hub for half of that money back. Very good... Well, you know, don't want to say very good move, but definitely a pretty standard move there does try to get a barracks but it looks like it's going to be taken out by the uh, sonic emitter so no infantry inside except for one zone trooper squad for this marv giving it that railgun letting it do that extra damage was not able to take out those juggernaut husks it would you know be a very good move by gothic to capture those because you know you get a juggernaut back at two-thirds hp for 500 bucks which is a heck of a deal and since he does control this land, you know, it would be easy. You do have, of course, have to spend the $500 on that uh, barracks. Let me double check that. Yes, so that is a total of 1,000 credits, but you're getting a juggernaut, which that's a pretty good deal. We do have grenadier squads. Oh, yes, I forgot about this. EMP grenadiers. 
Not sure. I'm guessing the Tiberium Silo absorbs shots. Going to be trying to take out that MCV with the Juggernauts. Gothic is. And also going to be trying to take down that, uh, take down the Sonic Emitter. Gothic is. If he can get those Grenadiers, I was actually wondering why the Grenadiers were there. But a uh, very good move from Steve Nash, so good on him using those upgrades, because he got that upgrade quite a while ago. I don't even know if I would remember if I had that upgrade in a situation like that, but uh, man, I gotta hand it to Gothic. He's just been pushing up, or picking apart Steve Nash for part of this game. He's been putting on a lot of pressure, and Steve Nash, I think he has had a little bit better economy, but... Gothic has been giving it his all, and he also does control this Tiberium spike down here. So technically, you know, got that constant income, which no one has claimed this spike. So, uh, you know, Gothic has 20, sec 20 credits a second to Steve Nash's 10 seconds credit. Not necessarily going to win him the game, but what could lose him the game is losing this Marv if continually gets locked down by the EMP Grenadier Squadrons, which were taken out by the Watchtowers, looks like. Gothic does have three engineers going to be loading those up. He's only got a spot for one, though. I'm, I don't know what the other engineers are going to be used for, as there are no Juggernaut husks left. Although, you know, it's good to have a couple of engineers. I guess he's not going to load an engineer up there just for the Juggernaut husks, as he does now have two Juggernauts, possibly a third one. No, that war factory was destroyed. He only has one war factory right here. And still no barracks, and I am seeing some Firehawks going to be uh, going on strikes. Not, uh, you know, go on strike, but could go for the tech center. That would be a decent choice. Might want to go for power plants as that will lock down base defenses. So I'm guessing Steve Nash is going to want to move in at this point. Uh, I don't know if that was the best move, selling off those base defenses. As all you have to do is rebuild that power plant. But then there he goes. So he, he would have his base defenses back online and be able to defend a little bit better against this attack, but it looks like we do have an engineer, not sure what he's going to be doing, possibly just going to be used to try and grab up a couple of uh, husks, which, you know, grabbing one of those juggernaut husks could turn the tide of the battle in Steve Nash's favor, but also a whole bunch of infantry and a sonic emitter will do that as well. We do have three juggernauts firing away, as well as the Marv trying to back up, and this battle base, the rig unpacked, throwing down base defenses, able to save him, Steve Nash pulling back. So Gothic holding on, doing very well. I think he does have the superior armors, army. So I would say Steve Nash kind of being able to hold on and put uh, Gothic up against the ropes, especially with these Firehawks being very active with the Firehawks, taking down another power plant with those. Not necessarily the unit you want to be taking out all the time, but hey, power plants work, and I believe that's going to take out that rifleman squad because, you know, why not? Actually, I think that was supposed to take out the power plant, but the power plant already got taken out, so there was just that rifleman squad sitting there, waiting. And this game, going on to be a fairly long game, and I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be going on, because we do have Tiberium fields around the map basically dried up at this point. We have this little bit of Tiberium left, and then, you know, no blue, because it's been harvested out by Gothic. So Gothic... I haven't actually looked at uh, Steve's Nash Army all this time, but he has no war factory, just a barracks, and only one barracks, not even dual barracks going on the way with, you would think, going on six, seven, eight harvesters, he'd be able to produce off of two barracks, but he's also got those firehawks flying around the map, doing crazy things, taking out buildings, being a, rather a nuisance to Gothic, because every one of those, you know, firehawks that he that are, you know, flying around, taking down power plants, taking his base defenses offline. That's a big, well, it's not a big nuisance, but it is a definite nuisance. Looks like Gothic going to be able to take down this MCV. Not quite going to be able to clean up these base defenses pretty easily, but I'm kind of surprised by how much damage these base defenses are doing. Marv almost up back to full health with that battle base and that uh, war factor healing it up as well as... The Engineer, this Sonic Emitter doing so much damage, able to take down a Juggernaut and a Battle Base. And the Orcas do get a pretty good hit, taking down that Shatterer and doing a little bit of damage to the Marv. This Sonic Shatterer, kind of the uh, hero Sonic Shatterer, dropping down two more Sonic Shatters, one taking a couple of hits right away as it pops up. But we do see, I believe that was six shots off, maybe only four. We do have an additional two more shots off from the Sonic emitters, so those things 
I feel like without uh, base defenses, well, without the crazy amount of sonic emitters and without that second MCV to power out those base defenses, this game would have gone a far bit more in Gothic's favor as might want to just uh, move forward as MCV, see if he can run over some of these infantry. Might be a decent choice to make. Also wants to, you know, be careful with that Shatter, because Shatter, because of the splash damage they do, when you line those infantry up, you can just take out a huge amount. Same with the Sonic Emitter, as I'm not sure if we saw it in this game. We've seen it in other games, though. And we do have uh, that Marv almost getting locked down continually by those pesky, pesky Grenadier squads, which... Ah... Uh, our orange player, our orange Zircon player, Steve Nash, has been using those Grenadier squads quite, quite effectively, doing quite a bit of damage, locking down War Factories, locking down Marvs. Those that Marv has taken quite a bit of damage. War Factory does go down, and where we got we got Firehawks circling around, and we do have Firehawks from Gothic. Might be using that uh, missile loadout. He might be on that missile loadout, I do believe he is, so that he can combat the Firehawks of Steve Nash. And it looks like the MCV may go down, I don't actually know if that's in range. The Orca is continually, to do, continually flying there. Bombing runs, but not really doing too much. Drops down another War Factory. Gothic does, Gothic Cullen is his own Orca Strike. Hits pretty well, but he doesn't have anything to follow it up with. I'm not sure, I think, if... Gothic maybe leads with these Firehawks and takes down the two Sonic Emitters. I believe it would take two Firehawks to take down one Sonic Emitter, but then you're, you know, a Sonic Emitter and a half down. He might be able to rush forward with his Marv, because Marv, pretty good. He's got three Zone tr zone Trooper squads in there, as well as the Engineer for that self-healing. So that Marv is very dangerous. Not to mention, if there's any extra Tiberium about the map, he could clean that up, although he does need to support it with some MCV, some APCs, not MCVs. He doesn't really need to support it with those. To take out those pesky Grenadier squads, which have locked it down time and time again. These Firehawks are not doing anything. I feel like in this time, they could have either done, you know, a bombing run on Steve Nash's Firehawks, which can be a little bit difficult, but they're over here. And as you can see, Gothic's Firehawks are just not doing anything. I mean, Steve Nash, his Firehawks are sitting right above this power plant, probably about to go on a bombing run. And Gothic's just, uh, his Firehawks not doing a whole lot. A little bit of lag there. Not sure what caused that. And no, still nothing. So neither player engaging with Firehawks. I'm guessing they're just a bit too preoccupied with this battle that's going on in the middle. And also the epic Harvester Wars. Another Orca Strike. These things are happening so frequently in this matchup. And I, of course, miss the Firehawk Wars, which not going to be able to take out that power plant, but was able to do a fair amount of damage. Looks like Steve Nash, not so sure how many Firehawks he lost, if any. I don't remember if he had three or four. It looks like Gothic losing possibly one Firehawk. I'm not sure, but it's possible that uh, both players do have their Firehawks on the missile loadout, and so they were just kind of waiting to hopefully get the better opportunity to engage one another. And we do have, without support from the Juggernauts, or with support from the Juggernauts, I'm not sure where that sniper team is, over here going to be able to take down that, uh, that airfield. Very good move from... Gothic, our purple Zocom player, distracting uh, Steve Nash. Wow, huge lag spike there, distracting Steve Nash with this army over here. Going to be able to take down this Marv, this Marv if, he, if he continually locks it down with these Grenadier squadrons. Engineer again, not sure where he's going. And not able to lock it down again, and so the Marv may escape, just may get out of range in time. No, it won't. The Marv will go down. Pretty big victory, so it looks like someone's calling in reinforcements or possibly an orbital strike. Reinforcements from possibly those sniper teams from Gothic. That was a pretty big victory for Steve Nash. Now, I'm not sure uh, how much Gothic has left. He's He lost this, uh, he sold off or lost this war factory down here, and now he has the reinforcements which that were called in over here in his base, taking out his refi his harvesters, which he still does have three up there. 
And looks like this Firehawk is going to go down as it is out of ammo and does not have anywhere to land. There it goes. We do have one, two harvesters, three harvesters, four, five, six, seven harvesters out of Steve Nash. So he's definitely ahead in the harvester games. Not that there is a whole lot to harvest, but he is ahead in the harvester count. Also ahead in the, you know, taken down power plant count. So Steve Nash doing a pretty good job taking out those power plants, forcing Gothic to rebuild them. Gothic has ran out of power time and time again. Those base defenses going down, and I think this is going to be just kind of a picking apart of Gothic by Steve Nash, because now Steve Nash does have the superior army. I would say Gothic had the superior army for much of the game, but as far as numbers go, we've seen Juggernauts go down time and time again to to uh, base defenses, the sonic emitters, and also huge infantry squads. We've seen this like two or three times in this match alone from Gothic and Steve Nash. Even when uh, we had a similar situation like this before we had, where we had juggernauts and sniper teams out of Gothic, Steve Nash still was able to come out ahead in terms of he's fighting this with a tier one army and tier one, tier two, as he does have some grenadier squads in there. Tier one, tier two army, and Gothic is using this tier three army that's just kind of getting beaten and we do have the sniper team active once again going to if he can take out this tech center that will be a pretty big deal a pretty nice deal for gothic and also you know that uh mcv but the sniper team does go down i guess outposts cannot detect stealth and we do have a orca strike force i believe attacked that uh no attack the tech center this tech center so close to going down I don't know if that would make a big difference because no airfield and no war factory. Steve Nash hasn't had a war factory in a little while. He called in reinforcements using this uh, support power and looks like Gothic is going to be taking down that tech center if he can help it, calling in the reinforcements over here in a fairly safe location. And he's also doing kind of a two-pronged attack, it looks like. He may be able to... Uh, we do have, I believe, yes, Shockwave Artillery going to be locking down, possibly, yes, taking down that Sniper Team, and going to be able to take out two Sonic Shatters, and I'm assuming going to be able to get this Juggernaut A was able to take out all three Sonic Shatters, and here comes the Infantry. Sonic Emitter does go down, but a second one pops right up. We've seen this out of Steve Nash in this game two or three or four times, just dropping down those Sonic Emitters so many times, and was able to kind of save himself there because that was uh we have the tech center going down was not able to repair it with the engineer and i think this tech center will go down and the rest of this base could potentially unless uh gothic's control is just too good with those apcs not letting the engineers get into that tech center and this third engineer gonna try will it make it i think it will not so Gothic, very good control from Gothic, making sure that none of the AP, none of the engineers get past the APCs, and not, I'm assuming Steve Nash is just going to clean this up, unless this is where the sonic emitters could come into play, because you can see some of these infantry squads get clumped up, and they just go down so fast to those sonic emitters, sonic shatters, but it does look like he is pulling back. And the tech center does go down, and Gothic pulls back, pulls back to up here, kind of in this this in between place between the two bases. Not a whole lot else going on in terms of production. We do have Hammerhead, so we must have rebuilt his airfield somewhere, probably in the middle. Yes, was able to rebuild that airfield. Probably been around for a little while. And those hammerheads with that AP ammo upgrade doing very well. And the hard points. Those hard points increase the uh, life of the hammerheads a, a significant amount. Load up some uh, rocket squads in there. Going to be able to take down this AA battery fairly well. Especially since it doesn't have the tungsten AA shells. Tungsten AA shells upgrade. And it does look like the rocket harvester able to clean up that pit bull. No problemo there. Which, I would have said that, uh, I was fairly sure that, uh, Gothic could come out ahead in this game and take it for a win, but with these hammerheads and considering that Gothic doesn't have a whole lot of anti-air to deal with them, 
especially if this command post goes down. Steve Nash may be able to take this game. He does have a Grenadier Squad going to be doing some damage. I think if uh, Steve Nash actually, he might not want to load up those uh, right those rocket squads, considering how low on HP the Hammerheads are. But you know, it would if he does load up those uh, rocket squads, he'd be able to take down those juggernauts very very quickly but we do have a slingshot probably i would say he should get another one or at least another apc out of gothic as those slingshots looks it does go down so now the advantage back in the favor of steve nash gothic though if he just builds a slingshot or two he could come back completely and take this game for the win not if these hammerheads go uncontested and I think in conjecture with this, uh, with these missile squads, it's possible that Steve Nash could come out ahead in this game, but Gothic still does have that high-tech army, although he did lose his tech lab, so he no more juggernauts for him, just, you know, APCs, but rifle squads and a couple of watchtowers versus those missile squads, rifle squads gonna win, although, you know, not if you have 40 rocket squads. Man, some of the massive rocket squads, you see them, they just go up against like six outposts and they totally smash the outposts just because there's so many rocket squads. Ever seen games like that? I see games like that sometimes. Anyways, looks like he was out of power yet again and or just got it locked down and the anti-air defense. This game is swinging back into Kane and to Steve Nash's favor, not Kane Nash. I believe that's a different player. And these uh, Rifleman Squad's probably going to be moving in. Steve Nash is going to want to take down that command post if possible, although he does need to find kind of the sweet spot where the AA battery can't fire at him. But take it down with some Rifleman Squad now. Uh, Gothic has to rebuild that if he wants any more anti-air defense. Of course, he could, you know, power out APCs. I don't think he can build I slingshots. I believe APC. slingshots do APC count as tier 2. Yes, you do require that command post, or perhaps that's tier 1.5. But, I mean, Steve Nash, he does have those hammerheads, which are really his only advantage in this game. And we do have another sniper team back here, forcing the cancel, forcing the sell-off. Zone Raiders, that actually uh, could be highly useful in one of these hammerheads that has full HP. Looks like he's already loaded up a couple of uh, squadrons of those Zone Raiders should grab that other squadron because Zone Raiders and Hammerheads with the ceramic armor upgrade can be so good. I don't know if uh, these APCs are going to be enough. He does have 7, 8, 9, 10 APCs and does get that command post. He should get out a slingshot as soon as possible. I actually think it might have been better if he would have cut a couple of these APCs and instead built some Predator tanks, something a little heavy hitter, a little more hard hitting than the APCs, as the APCs, you know, they're getting taken out in groups of two. We saw five APCs go down right there, and a sixth, he had ten APCs, now he's got, you know, four, he had eleven, I guess, or, you know, only four got taken out, he has five now, I believe, five or six. I can't count, I just messed up numbers so many times, and we do have the Hammerheads, highly mobile strike force, Gothic can definitely come back from this, but... He's going to have to, uh, you know, deal with this hammerhead force at some time, at some point. I'm assuming because considering how mobile hammerheads are, if you try and force a base race, you're going to get, you know, partway through your enemy's base, and then hammerheads are going to show up, and if you don't have anything to deal with the hammerheads, what you're going to do but call in reinforcements, predator tanks, and APCs flying right over, uh, so free win, free kills, not quite a win yet, for Gothic, although Gothic is definitely in this game, especially with these slingshots. Slingshots will make quick work of those hammerheads, even with the ceramic points upgrade, although he can't really, you know, just send out slingshots willy-nilly. He really has to be careful with those, as if they get caught, pop, get caught out of position by... Actually, I'm not sure if Steve Nash has much of an army. He should probably sell that Tiberium Silo off, get those, uh, you know, like... 50 credits back that you get back from selling off Tiberium silos. But I'm actually kind of surprised that the game has gone on this long, and if it goes on too much longer, it'll just be 
It might turn into a situation where neither player has any Tiberium, but neither player can really decisively end the game, so they both kind of sit back and wait for the other one to make a move and hope that they can defend. But we do have a lot of slingshots getting out, those firehawks as well. Firehawks could be just the exact remedy as hammerheads do clump up. They can clump up quite a bit. Don't know if uh, watchtowers is the right choice, but firehawk does go down with those uh, missile squads. And I'm assuming some zone troopers, some zone squads, uh, zone raiders. Zone Raider, yeah, Zone Raider squads in there, and if we're the Slingshot, Slingshot needs to begin at the front line, otherwise these Hammerheads will completely take down this force. Uh, was able to take down a couple of infantry squads and a Juggernaut, that's a pretty big deal considering Gothic only had two Juggernauts, he's now down to, you know, half that number in just one quick attack. But these six Hammerheads could easily become zero Hammerheads if... Steve Nash is not careful. It was able to take down two Shatters, as you can see. Hammerheads with those Zone Raiders can be so effective. Those, uh, whatever the weapon that the Zone Raiders have, some sort of grenade launcher going on there, so effective in these, in these sorts of situations. Not nearly as effective on the ground, but when you put them, when you pair them with the mobility of the Hammerheads, doing strikes like these, so good. As you were seeing, you know, right here, Slingshot's almost getting the perfect positioning, not able to do that much damage, wasn't able to seriously damage any of the hammerheads, not even enough to re warrant a return to base. And where are the slingshots? They're right here in front of my face, but they're not able to do that damage that they need because if they get too far forward where they can actually attack the hammerheads before they get there, they get taken out by the, by the missile squads. Looks like uh, Gothic may just need to push forward to try and take down this force, otherwise he's just going to continually get harassed by Steve Nash. Steve Nash, or Gothic throwing down the barracks, possibly going to be getting out an engineer, throw that into the MCV, heal it up pretty quickly. I can only assume that's what he's going to be doing. Possibly, yes, was able to save his MCV there, so good on him. We do have another, a uh, far better support uh, call in right there call for support those APCs and Predator tanks, far better than, you know, trying to have it fly across your enemy's base. Those slingshots just, you know, dashing willy-nilly around this, this kind of small base, trying to deal with, never mind, I was going to say trying to deal with those hammerheads, but they couldn't quite do it, so good on Gothic, he held in that game for a long time, he had an advantage for definitely part of the game, was able to outplay Steve Nash for part of that game. Let's take a look at that resource graph, as it often shows, you know, usually the player with more money wins. Although that's not always the case, but it is definitely the case sometimes, such as in this game. So, wow, 40 minute game, and I know that uh, Fraps usually runs a little bit slower, so if, you know, 36 minute game, it's probably going to be 40 minutes for you guys. Thank you for sitting through this, if you did, I can't imagine that you did. I'm pretty sure everyone left in the first 10 minutes, which means I've been talking to myself this whole time. It's almost as lonely as being alone in my room recording these. With everyone just abandoning me like that. But anyways, I would say great game out of Steve Nash. Was able to uh, pull ahead in kind of, well, I would say the second half of that game. Gothic kind of had the advantage in a number of different sections, but good on both players. Good game to both players. And this does it for me in this game, so quite an epic game. And I will catch you guys next time. This is Cybert, signing out.